Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Phil the Conquistadork. Let's talk about Inscription. Inscription is the latest game by Daniel Mullins. It was uh, developed by him and Daniel Mullins Games and published by Devolver Digital. It was released in October of 2021. And I have played, I believe, all of... Daniel Mullins' games. I have played Pony Island, I have played The Hex, and now I've played this. And I have to say, we know what scares Daniel Mullins. If there is anything that I've learned as a horror writer, it's one of the things that they tell you. They say, write what scares you. And if that is true, and Daniel Mullins is following that rule, then what scares him is video games that fuck with you. Because that's what this is about. It's what Pony Island was about. It's what The Hex was about. There's a very creepy pasta sensibility here, uh, which is spooky and also very fun and interactive. It makes you really feel like you're a part of the game. Uh, and this is easily one of the best examples of that style of game uh, available right now. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning. In Inscription, you are essentially playing the role of a streamer, an online streamer who specializes in collectible card games. You are playing a collectible card game video game called Inscription. Uh, eventually, you find out that uh, it was possibly part of a prank. Uh, someone buried it outside of your house, and it's this game, and the people who are in charge of Inscription, the card game, uh, are very cagey when he reaches out about this game that you're playing, and, uh, uh, and it, it blurs the lines between what's the game and what's real, uh, that whole thing. You've seen it before, and it's done very well here. I would have to say, though, that the most important and memorable aspect of this wasn't the fourth wall breaking stuff that uh, they did, but the game itself. And this is going to be kind of a funny thing for me to say, but when you compare this game to Pony Island and especially The Hex, both of those games were fantastic. I, I think they're both great. I think they were both very interesting. They were both very compelling and uh, just terrific examples of how we can tell a story through video games that just wouldn't work anywhere else. Um, but the gameplay itself isn't what I would call fun. Uh, in Pony Island, it is a jumping game. You occasionally get to swing the pony's head around to blow uh, monsters up. Uh, in the Hex, you're playing a variety of different games, but they're all very lo-fi versions of those games. Um, fighting games, role-playing games, stuff like that. And you are basically just going through the motions of the game in order to get to know more of the narrative that uh, is being put in front of you. You're trying to unpeel this onion. You're trying to find out what is at the center of this weird glitch horror spook fest. You want to know where it's all coming from, and slowly, piece by piece, you do. Uh, this, on the other hand, Inscription actually has a really solid collectible card game at the core of it. It is fun. It is a fun game. And as you go through the chapters of the game, you play different iterations of it. The style of the game shifts as you go, but the game at the center of it always stays the same uh, with different evolving gameplay elements and that sort of thing. And it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, you want to come back to it over and over again. I, I beat it, and I'm already thinking in terms of maybe playing it again. Uh, just an excuse to get the rest of the achievements and enjoy that gameplay a little bit more. Building the deck and evolving your cards becomes really, really fun. And uh, I, I congratulate Daniel Mullins on, on getting in that final missing piece, because that feel, felt like the only thing that was missing from his games. I really enjoyed how spooky and strange the narrative of his games were, uh, but uh, the, the gameplay itself, I, but I, I was basically willing to overlook the fact that the gameplay itself was kind of lacking, uh, 
because of how much I was enjoying uh, what he was putting in front of me with this story. Another aspect of the gameplay itself, which is terrific, is you're sitting at a table, uh, especially in the first act, you're sitting at a table talking to this mysterious dark figure at the end of the room. You only see his eyes. It's really creepy and wonderful. Um, but occasionally, you're able to stand up and mosey around the room itself. So yeah, you're playing the card game at the table, but you're also able to get up from the table and investigate the room. And there are puzzles throughout the room, and you're going to find puzzles hidden all throughout this game. And sometimes the puzzles are necessary to move forward in the game, and sometimes they're just filled with power-ups and uh, different interesting little Easter eggs and hints toward uh, what you're dealing with. Uh, in the game on the whole, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's not a really common thing that with a um, collectible card game, especially a collectible card game video game, that part of the interaction is what happens surrounding in the game and not just what's in the game itself. Now, evidently, there was an ARG element uh, to this game. Uh, I was not aware of it uh, during the podcast that I host with uh, with Kevin, the Arcadeologist. Um, we actually discussed it, and he actually goes into some detail there. So if you want to learn a little more about that, uh, please subscribe to our podcast, Pixel Lit. Uh, we talk about novelizations of video games, and uh, hopefully eventually video games that uh, have that are based on novels, we'll reverse it. Uh, but we do like to talk about just regular-ass video games in, in the middle of it here and there, because we cannot be kept on subject, much like I can't be kept on subject here. Anyway, subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> um, another thing that connects this game to Pony Island and to the Hex, there's a very creepy pasta feel to it. Um, it's fantastic. It, again, it comes from that video game fucking with you kind of thing, which is a very popular style of creepypasta. For anyone who's read them, I, I'm sure we have all read one or two where basically the central plot line is, I found this game at a garage sale, or I found this game buried under my backyard, or my friend lent me this game, and I played it, and something's wrong with the game, and it's fucking with me. Um, that's what this is. It is basically a creepypasta game uh, that gets very heavily into themes of uh, preserving games, what happens to a game when we just cannot get a hold of it anymore. Uh, uh, I, I, I was brought in mind immediately to PT, which is nearly extinct now because of uh, it being un unreleased, essentially. Um, things like that. And then on a deeper level, it felt a lot about the characters in these games are alive. They are alive and they don't want to die. Um, a lot of the cards you play with speak to you. Uh, they feel the pain uh, of what they're going through, and uh, it actually can cause you to second-guess yourself on certain moves uh, that you might make. It's very, very interesting. On the other hand, with the puzzles, uh, uh, the one downside to this game is it's, it's the same downside I ran into with Pony Island and the Hex. Some of the puzzles feel kind of obtuse. Um, there are certain puzzles in the game, not a lot of them, I will say that. Not a lot of the puzzles, but enough that I noticed uh, these puzzles, some of them, it's just easier to flip through them and try different random combinations until you get it right than to try and actually figure out uh, the puzzle. Um, some of the panel puzzles were like that, and it just... it. And, and maybe that was just my experience. Some of you out there might have had absolutely no issue with those whatsoever uh, and might have been stumped at the ones that I thought were super easy or at least intuitive. Um, and it just... But that, I, I ran into that problem with Pony Island especially as well. Uh, there are some puzzles in there that just don't make a lot of sense and you find yourself kind of stuck. Now, the good thing about this is most of the puzzles in this game you don't have to solve them in order to move forward. They're just bonuses, uh, extra cards and everything like that that you can add to your deck. But some of them you do need them to move forward. Uh, and that's when, as I always say, uh, there's no shame in checking a guide. 
uh, please do do that. Um, that that was the one main downside that I'll take from this game. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things, that's not much. It really wasn't all that much uh, to deal with. So, all in all, I would have to say this is Daniel Mullins' best game ever. He's like, I'm not getting on stage. <laughs> He's a smart man. He got the fuck out of there. He was like, no, no, thank you. I'm going to make weird ass movies uh, by myself, please. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> Altman wakes up. Altman uh, wakes up. Yep. Surrounded by doctors. <laughs> uh, he made it. He's alive. And he starts talking about the marker. Uh, and Markov is like, and here's the thing is like, I guess we did. Did we not? Uh, do we not? Has nobody else called it the marker yet? Like, because Mark Markov says the marker. What marker? He's talking nonsense. Give him another shot. And I'm like, yeah, I, I. That doesn't make any sense at 